Sunless Skies has a very deliberate pace. Unlike Sunless Sea, there are no engine upgrades, there are no crew that speed up your engine or affect fuel efficiency, there isn't even a temporary engine boost unless you count using geometry to achieve a minor speed increase with strafing. But for those of you that are finding the pace wearing, who would really like a handy way to speed up everything, ideally without making the game a cakewalk, there is a way. All you need to do is download a third party tool. It's called Cheat Engine. It's a free open source memory scanner and editor, and you can find a link to it in the description of this video, or you can just Google Cheat Engine. It's at cheatengine.org, like you can see on the screen now. All right, to download Cheat Engine, you go to the Cheat Engine website. Unfortunately, some of the links are a bit dodgy, like I don't want to have to download a Chrome extension to get my file, and that's definitely what it wants. No. You can click skip to download, you can download the file. So we'll download that now. Cheat Engine 6.83 is the most recent release for Windows, and then we run the installer. Alright, it will require UAC, which is not being captured by OBS, but you have to approve a UAC prompt. It takes a while to launch for some reason on my computer, and hence I launched it twice. So we accept the agreement, we install it, It'll you can create a start menu folder or not, I don't care. Uh, you can check for new versions as well. You definitely want to make sure you don't install additional software, because that shit is not cool. And once you've done that, you uh, can go on to the next step. So we're gonna move through these next pieces, uh, reset settings, and launch Cheat Engine. So you can see that we've already got Sunless Guys running. So we're gonna skip the tutorial. We're just gonna go through the what we want to do here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Speed Hack. So let's just open a process. In this case, we want to open Cheat Engine. Uh, no, we want to open Sunless Guys. What? What do they even mean? Then. We uh, want to enable speed hack. So what we can do to make this easier on ourselves is we can go to our settings and we can define hotkeys. So we can define hotkeys to turn on and off speed hack. And then I would recommend setting up a hotkey for setting it to one and a hotkey for setting it to say two. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go with B and G, because neither of those are used in the game. And um, let's go with T. I like using control because uh, it's not also not used in the game, and I would rather not inadvertently try and... I'd rather not accidentally press the button to change these things. Once we've done that, we can enable speed hack. We can also use control T to do the same thing. So. Once, we, once you've done this, you can go into the game, and if you press Control b everything will speed up. You can see it right on the title page. Literally, the entire game speeds up. This doesn't mean, oh, my ship moves faster. I mean, it does mean, yes, your ship moves faster, but it means the enemies move faster. It means your fuel consumption increases. It means that your... Uh, your, your terror rate increases. It means that it's a lot harder to do minor strafe, so it's very easy to accidentally bump into the dock when you go in. Uh, and obviously to undo it, we can just press Control G, and to completely turn off, we can press Control T, because that's what we set, and that for some reason generates a really annoying Bing sound in Windows, so you, you know it's working. And then obviously if I press B and G, all right, maybe it isn't working. Anyway, whatever. I, I mostly rely on having G and B bound. Uh, and this allows you to get through areas of the game much faster. Not more safely, in fact combat is harder when you speed everything up, which is one of the reasons for reducing, uh, for binding a key to turn it back off. But this is a way of reducing some of the tedium that I found I was encountering in the late game. Where it's like, yes, okay, I need to go from this spot to this spot to this spot. I don't have any reason to really divert from that. I really want to finish it off an ambition, for example, uh, or just finish off an officer quest. And I don't, and I've got the money 
that I can afford not to be distracted. I don't need to chase down an extra story or two. Uh, so yeah, it's a really useful tool. I made use of it especially towards the end of the Truth Ambition where I had just done everything that I wanted to with that captain, so I even increased it to, to times 4. One thing I should note, apparently if you increase it very high, you'll notice the AI stops working properly. Um, at times 4, the AI seems perfectly fine, uh, but you're still stuck with your human reflexes, and for me, I walked around a corner and nearly, well not walked, my ship flew around a corner and nearly got completely and utterly murdered by a logo. L Logoi? Um, yeah, I never know how to pronounce that properly, but that is a thing that you should be very wary of. Still, I can definitely recommend it. It does make the game slightly less stable. I've had one crash with it, no crashes without it, but I think it is a handy tool to keep in your pocket so you can avoid burning out. Until next time, have a great day.